But I'm so heated because now that's exactly what's making them lose games. Rip off that band-aid and say, no, not in my opinion, it's freaking objectively better every single time that it's happened. It's been objectively better. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel for part two of three of the three part video series analyzing NRG's series against Gen G Mobile One. In this series, we're trying to identify why NRG has been struggling recently. In part one, I laid out my thoughts on why NRG struggled and I emphasized Squishy being too passive in the midfield and putting himself on defense so much because of that passiveness in the midfield that as great of a player as he is, as solid as he is on defense, if you're playing that much defense, you are bound to mess up at some point in time. So that was the first thing that I felt like was going to be an issue from Squishy. We watched the first game from his point of view. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. The link will be down in the description below. And secondly, I identified that I feel as though Garrett makes a lot of poor challenges on the ball and he goes for a lot of things that he's clearly beat to, or he just whiffs a lot. He, he just overall has a lot of poor challenges in my opinion. And again, in part one, we may or may not have dug into that a little bit. Again, check out part one before you watch this one. I think it's a really great idea that you do so. Get more of an insight as to what's going on with the whole team overall but in part two here we're gonna be watching from garrett g's perspective for the majority of the game just a little bit of a background before we get in i love nrg favorite team favorite three players in the rlcs justin squishy and garrett g man such iconic players in rocket league who i'm sure you all know at one point were dominating almost the entire world in rocket league with their play style which i always viewed as very basic very simplistic play style, a very, a very solid play style where you just focused on correct rotations and you did so at a very extreme speed. They just, they rotated clean, they passed when it was available and they did so at a very extreme speed. It's pretty much classic like ranked gameplay, except you know, when a, when a ranked game feels good, not when it's a ranked game where everyone's bumping each other and just chaos is you know the entire game but when you know you actually play those ranked games where everybody on your team is rotating the way they're supposed to and it's just like when everybody's rotating the way you're supposed to you never have to slow down you never have to stop you never have to hit the brakes it's just go 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 because one person's going the next one's behind them one person's going the next one's behind them. and it's when your rotations are clean that's what it facilitates and i thought energy did that better than any other team in the game and that's why they were able to dominate for so long they didn't overcomplicate their game they just rotated clean, did it faster than anybody else, and dominated because of it. And then at some point in time, I felt as though Garrett started struggling, started a lot of uncharacteristic whiffs, a lot of bad challenges, rotations fell apart. And I just wanna I just wanna see this team get back to where they were. I know NRG just uh Sizz just stepped down as coach for NRG, which a lot of people we're saying probably should happen that Sizz is more of a coach for the mentality of the boys, a great funny personality. But even when NRG was like struggling and you were watching a broadcast, you could see that Sizz wasn't really doing that. When when the team was struggling, Sizz looked like he was kind of down in the dumps with the boys. And so I think a coach change is completely necessary and it's a great idea. I think this team, this these three players, as long as they've now been struggling, I'm really glad that they're still together. I think this is a still a roster that has the potential to win another world championship. I don't think this team needs to change. I just think something about their gameplay needs to change. And I laid all that out in part one of this series. Talked about some of the changes that I think need to happen. And we'll, we'll touch on that more in this, this video as well, of course. But hey, NRG, if you guys are watching this, I'm available as a coach pick me up <laughs> all right let's get into the series no more hesitating no more stalling oh actually one more thing this is again for those of you who don't know this is a series against gen g in the rlcs uh 2022 2023 fall open All right, so far so good. Okay, this is something uh, I point out a lot. I do a lot of replay analysis. This isn't, this isn't a huge mistake right away, but again, 
What I was just talking about earlier was that I felt like energy always rotated so cleanly, so well, kept the rotations basic, the standard like 2019 style of rotations where it was constantly a circular motion rotating behind your teammates constantly. And while Garrett isn't interrupting the play at all here by rotating technically into the play, right? This, you know, you have Justin off on this side somewhere. So in my opinion, Justin right now is the second man. Garrett's about to be third man. I don't think anybody argues with that, but the play is developing in this direction and Garrett's rotating in this direction. Do you see how that's rotating into the play? Again, in this scenario, it's not interrupting anything. But what would be the harm if you're Garrett in just rotating out in this direction? Let Justin push up the field, whether it be, I'm not exactly sure where Justin is. Let's go back one more time. Get an idea of where Justin is at this point in time. Justin, first man. Garrett challenges. Okay, you know Justin is going to be facing the back corner, right? If you're Justin, he just landed. He's facing this direction. We know that. You don't even have to look at him. You just know that. So he's going to be rotating back this way, whether he grabs a mid boost and turns, whether he goes all the way back to the corner and turns, whether he grabs pads and turns, he's going to be turning up in this direction, right? Justin is going to be second man. Squishy's taking the ball up in this direction as first man. And again, Garrett going back in this direction doesn't really hurt anything. But why not keep the rotations circular? The reason you do so, and the reason why, again, I think energy was so good, is because they kept these circular rotations. And when you keep these circular rotations, your rotations overall just never falter. This Everything falls into place constantly. It's really hard to mess up a circle. <laughs> you know, if you know that your rotations should be in a circle, it's really easy to know who's next on the ball. It's really easy to know where you should be at any point in time. And just sticking to basic rotations, it just keeps things very clean and it keeps things Un, uncomplicated is that the right word so instead, instead of, it's not a huge detail here and you can argue that by Garrett going in this direction if the ball gets forced to the backboard then he's there for it right you can argue that but if Garrett rotates out this way maybe that back corner boost is up if the ball gets if the ball is in a situation where it can get banged to the backboard then he's still there for it if he's picking up pads rotating back and the ball comes off the backboard he can still go up and challenge it this situation isn't too bad of a rotation but let's keep watching and see if we see that happen more often and see if we see that mess up the rotation. I think there's a good chance that we will see that. I think there's a good chance that we will see that. Ooh, really good passing play by Squishy and, and Justin. And that's, that's beautiful. There it is. It's a great demo by Nolly. Garrett getting hunted in the net. Okay. This is a good early challenge by Garrett. No hesitation there, which is really important because if he hesitates here, it's going to be really confusing on whether Justin or him should go for this. So I'm really glad he's not hesitating here. Just taking the initiative. Okay, I'll be the one to challenge. Let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted, boys. So I do really like that. No hesitation challenge there. So far, so good, since that first rotation we disagreed with. Not really sure, I'm gonna, I did this for Squishy when I was watching Squishy and I noticed somebody else did something questionable. I did switch to their point of view. So we are gonna switch point of views here and I wanna switch to Justin. My, my thought process here is that Justin's probably trying to interfere with Chronic on this rotation, making sure that Garrett's not left in a 1v1 with Chronic. But then we also see Squishy push up right in the same area as well as if he's trying to help and not leave Garrett G in a 1v1 with Chronic. So it's like both Justin and Squishy there are trying to avoid leaving Garrett G in a 1v1 with Chronic there. That needs to be communicated. I think one of those two players should say, I'll interfere. 
I'll interfere. The other one sticks to the rotation. Squishy rotates behind Garrett here instead of in front of him, right? Justin calls at this point in time. I'll interfere. I'll interfere. I'm bumping Chronic. I'm going for Chronic. Something. Then Squishy knows, okay, I can rotate behind Garrett because Garrett should be second man here. If Justin's going to interfere with Chronic, he lets that happen and then he's second man. Justin's technically first man, the first one challenging the ball. Garrett's second. Squishy should be third, but we see Squishy push up into the mid as if he's trying to interfere with the play now instead of, instead of Justin. So I think Squishy or Justin need to call that they're interfering. Probably Justin because he had eyes on the play sooner. Then Garrett should be the one challenging this ball, squishy behind him. So that seems like more of a lack of communication issue than anything else, to be honest. Let me see this from squishy now. Gets beat to that ball, sees Garrett clearly in front of him, but again, I just don't like that's, it seems like it's mostly on squishy to be honest, unfortunately, because I, Hate to see Squishy struggle into making bad decisions. But where does the sense in this rotation come in? What? Why is Squishy just cutting off Garrett? Why is Garrett not the one challenging this? Squishy rotates back. And if anything, that gives Squishy the time to veer out to the right, grabbing more pads to get more boost. And maybe he even finds that he has enough time to grab the back right corner boost, the big 100 pad. So, so far, two rotational mistakes. The first one on Garrett, but not that much of a mistake, to be honest. Just sort of something that I would like to see sticking to fundamental rotations. And this one I think is just a clear, clearly bad rotation. Just a, just a bad rotation, an inarguably bad rotation here. All right, Squishy bumped, Garrett has to go. This is tough for uh, NRG, but they do well. Trying to get that over the gap to uh, Justin. I'm not really sure why Garrett's purposely avoiding every single pad on the field on his rotation back here. It's like, it's like pros kind of <laughs> forget about the basics sometimes, or maybe it's just NRG and that's why they're struggling. Hello, Garrett pad or maybe at least grab that pad that you can on your rotation hello maybe maybe rotate over the whole path of pads to the back post instead of cutting straight into the middle of the net let me see this though i mean if garrett's expecting that touch to go backboard and appjack to be trying to double tap maybe he's trying to be in net to assist squishy with trying to read the touch Still don't see a reason why he can't at least give himself that 12 boost off to his right, but everybody makes mistakes, and especially at a high pressure situation like this, you can you can forget about it. And this is another situation ah, where the fundamental rotations would just be great here would just be really good. This is not something that you would see uh, NRG do in the past. Again, sticking to the fundamental rotations of a of a one man, first man who, who rotates to third man, a second man who becomes first man, and a third man, Justin, you can't see that, it's behind me, a third man, Justin, back in that direction. It would be beautiful. Yes, I know Squishy's trying to help. He's trying to assist, but this is something that if you just stick to the fundamental rotations, again, the beauty of it, I'm saying this, I'm being so repetitive about these rotations, but there's, they work for a reason. They get rid of the hesitation. You don't have to think. Like, it's just bam, 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 go, go, go. It's so easy. Instead of, if, if Garrett can just trust that Squishy's rotating out here, he doesn't have to wait. He can challenge this ball. This is within Garrett's, he can challenge this. There's no reason Garrett has to turn and be like, okay, I'm going to wait for Squishy to help me on this. Garrett's got somebody behind him. He doesn't need to worry about if he gets beat. Squishy 
rotate out, Garrett challenge the ball. Whether Garrett gets the touch or not, Justin's behind him for the follow-up. Whether Justin gets beat or not, Squishy's then rotating him behind him for the next follow-up. I want to see NRG go back to basic one, two, three man rotations, circular rotations. And I think 90% of their problems are instantly fixed. Yes, it will take a little bit of time to get the trust or to remove the hesitation that you've built into yourselves now because of constant plays like this. But look at this. If Squishy or if Garrett knows here, okay, Squishy challenge, he's going to grab that boost and then he's bam, he's rotating the third man like he should be. He's going to rotate out here. If, not, if nothing else, maybe Squishy gets a bump on Nolly here instead of going for the boost. In which case, I'm still pushing because afterwards, then Squishy rotates out. In any situation, whatever Squishy does here, afterwards, he should be rotating the third man, in my opinion. And I think that's the best play. I think that's the best rotation. Garrett does not have to hesitate here. He goes up and challenges. Yes, Squishy's a little slow on this recovery and on this rotation. But... It doesn't change the fact that if Garrett can remove that hesitation, he gets this challenge. Bam. He goes up. Goes up and challenges this. It's at least a 50-50. It's at least a 50-50. So again, I put that on Squishy, unfortunately, because I love Squishy. He's literally the guy that I think most of us, myself included, learned how to rotate from. Learned how to play Rocket League well from. And they're overcomplicating things. They're overcomplicating rotations. They're overcomplicating every situation. Again, no reason that... Garrett needs to be rotating into the play here. Maybe he was expecting Justin's touch to go out in this direction, in which case he wants to be able to turn for it. But how often does that happen in ranked, where a ball's going in this direction, and as Garrett, you try to turn for it, but the opponent is still there. The opponent is there because they just have good rotations and good positioning. And so you get dunked anyways. How often does that happen? We know that situation. That's a common situation in ranked. Imagine against pros, they're gonna be even quicker to get to this ball as it comes out in this direction. I know you can't see that arrow very well, but you know somebody's gonna be coming in this direction nine times out of 10. Whether you lose the ability to take a 50 on this ball or not, Again, I think 90% of the, the problems on energy could be fixed if instead of trying to rotate into the play here, we just rotate back post. Squishy follows up. If Justin doesn't mess up this touch, then his car is gonna be going in this direction anyways. He could possibly get the same 50-50 on the ball as Garrett. If not, at least bait the touch from the person coming in this direction to be slightly worse than they would like, in which case then, Squishy's still next man on the ball. Garrett's in net behind him waiting. I don't think you can ever find a play where people are not rotating circular, not sticking to basic one, two, three man rotations. And I don't think you can ever find a play where you can make a case that not rotating the way I'm explaining is better than rotating the way I'm explaining, if that makes sense, what I'm trying to say. I don't think you could ever find a play where rotating circular rotating one two three man rotations that i'm trying to ingrain here i don't think you could ever find a play where that's a bad play where that's not going to be effective yes you can make a case for the other rotation that i'm pointing out cutting rotation you can make a case for it but i in any any scenario where you can make a case for it i think you can also make a case for basic rotations and i think basic rotations are way easier to stick with and way easier to of avoid messing up. So let's see how this plays out. Now that Garrett rotated in, Squishy's next on the ball. Imagine if Garrett was back post right now. Okay, he wouldn't be on that ball. Garrett's back post right now. This touch comes out. Okay, maybe Justin's pushing up at this point in time. Let's see Justin's point of view. 
Because again, I don't believe that Justin wouldn't be able to push for this instead of Garrett. If Justin was, or if Garrett was behind Justin, bam, he makes that touch. He does Garrett, sitting in front of the ball there. He immediately knows Squishy's gonna be next on this ball. Jumps back down to the ground. Already, doesn't need to be trying to position for some save or something like that. Because he knows somebody's behind him. He knows he can be second man. He's already on the ground. This touch comes out. And yes, Garrett's next to this ball. But Justin would also be able to be next to this ball. So yes, the formation is the same, right? You've got one person. You've got the first man in front of the play. You've got the second man on the ball. And you've got the third man in net. It doesn't matter who it is. If you rotated the way I wanted him to, Garrett would be the third man instead of Justin. Justin's the second man. Squishy's still the first man. So the play becomes exactly the same. But like I've said like three times already, the fundamental circular rotation is easier to maintain. When shit hits the fan, it'd be much easier to know who's next on the ball, stick to good rotations, not make a mistake defensively with good circular one, two, three man rotations. And again, I just pointed out how you can make a case for what Garrett did, but it's no different than if he had rotated to the back post. The only difference is rotating back to the back post, maintaining those normal rotations is way easier in the long term. And if anything, you can argue, obviously Garrett's play was not the best here. I don't know if that was forced. If he could have done anything better in this situation. Let's see with what cards he's dealt here. Not really. He doesn't really have much other plays. If he takes time, he's going to get challenged by Jack. If he tries to bring it up the wall, he's going to get dunked by Chronic. But you could argue if Justin's coming in for this ball at this angle... He's got a lot more speed, a lot more run up on the play, and he can actually get this ball probably a touch that's hard enough to beat Chronic in this in this situation. I'm going to be honest. Justin, with the speed and the momentum and the run up that he would have coming in this direction, he could possibly get a pinch that's strong enough to get past Chronic or just jump up to the wall behind the ball because I think Justin has more plays here in his in his positioning. I think if Justin was the second man on that ball instead of Garrett, that possession, that touch from, from Garrett it would instead be from Justin, not because of who the players are, but because of the positioning that they're coming from, I think Justin would have had a better play. Good beat. That's all there is to say on that. Ah. <sighs> I'm really interested to see if a really successful team like BDS or maybe even like this Gen G team or like Space Station or Optic or FaZe, I think we need to do more of these team analysis and find out are, is every team in the RLCS like is one, two, three man circular rotation really dead in RLCS or is it only the teams who are struggling like NRG who are not still sticking to that one, two, three man basic rotation? I'd be very interested to see how BDS rotates, how Optic rotates, how SSG rotates, how the best teams rotate. It'd, I would be interested to see that. Right, let me go back. Kind of got distracted there talking. Okay, nothing wrong with this. I uh, I'm sort of with Garrett here. I think that this is his ball to go for. Yes, it's a bit harder than the angle Squishy has, but. In this play, Garrett rotates into second man positioning before Squishy does. Here, ah, Squishy probably doesn't expect Garrett to go for it. 
because of the positioning. Let me see this. That's just blatant disregard for Garrett's existence on the field. Squishy's playing kind of bad this game, I'm not gonna lie. He's gotten, what, maybe both goals, or he facilitated the pass to Justin first and then scored the second goal himself, but come on, Squish. Again, Squishy was the first in front of the play here. First man, okay. You couldn't get the ball. He beat you on the challenge. Your play is done, Squishy. You, you are first man, what does that mean now? Garrett's in the play. There's no reason that you need to cut him to be second man here. You're now third man, Squishy. Squishy, 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 Squishy. Like I said, dude, we all learned how to rotate and play the game from you. We know you know how to do this. NRG, I think, has just been building bad habits for a long time now, and so things like this are happening. Squishy, squishy, squishy. You're third man. Garrett should be the one on this ball. This is not Garrett's mistake here, unfortunately. Not unfortunately. I love all three players. Let's see how this would have developed possibly differently had we seen Garrett. At this angle, Garrett's play is most likely going to be a solo play of some sort, right? Maybe a... No, no pass to Justin is available. At this point, that angle only really gives Garrett two options, I would say. The, the option of going up and making some sort of aerial solo play, meeting the ball in this area, whether he catches it for a flip reset, catches it for an air dribble, pops it off the ceiling and back down for himself. Or he could try dropping the ball as it comes up here, meets up with it, and just drops it down to the right for Squishy to come in on. That's also a good play. Garrett has two pretty good plays to make here. The squishy dives over his head, takes it away. And um, now they're on the counterattack. Whereas they'd still be on offense had squishy not done that. Good effort by Garrett. I think Garrett's playing much better in this game than we saw he was from the first game in this series. This is fine. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I mean. I don't hate Garrett going for this. The only the only critique I have of Garrett going for this is that he is a pro player. And you have to assume that he has seen this situation millions of times. And he should know more often than not He's getting beat to this ball. And they're already up two goals. This was an overly ambitious challenge, which we did I we did identify or we did point out that in my opinion, Garrett has been guilty of a lot of bad challenges. And while this is not nearly as bad of challenges as we've as I've seen from Garrett. This is the only critique I have of this. A lot of people would go for this. A lot of ranked players would go for this as Garrett. But as a pro, I feel like you should know better. Up to already, you can be more passive, you can be safer, you can take yourself out of the play less, going for risky challenges. And I think as a pro who's seen this situation probably hundreds of thousands of time, times, he sh shouldn't be making the decision to challenge this. Uh oh. What happened? Ay. Well, you see Justin rotating hard into the play here. That's the first thing that happens. I think there's a good chance that we will see that. Okay, there's no boost anywhere on this side of the field. And he's just chasing straight into the play. Uh, 
circular rotation. So everybody on the team is guilty of this. Justin, I think, is the least guilty of mistakes on energy. I think Justin's generally the best player on the team. I think everybody probably agrees with that. But as we see, he's not perfect and he's not completely uh, not to blame for problems here. Again, fundamentals, fundamentals. When did the fundamentals get lost in pro play? Why? Why did they get lost? If Justin, instead of V-lining into this play here, I don't know if he thinks he can help, if he thinks he needs the help, but if he just rotates out this way, picking up pads, coming to the net, squishy, I mean, he just challenges the ball at this point in time somewhere, if he gets a 50, maybe just wins the race to the ball because he doesn't have to hesitate because he doesn't see his teammate rotating straight into the play. It's so weird to me that these pro players are thinking that, are not seeing what I'm seeing. Let me see this from Squishy's POV, oops, past him. Okay. If Justin's rotating out at this point in time, Squishy knows, okay, if I challenge, Justin's behind me. There's really nothing that Squishy can do in this in this position that's a bad play if Justin is behind him. Literally, pretty much anything Squishy does in this position, whether he tries to 50 jack as the ball comes in this area, yes, Nali might chase him, try to get a bump on him, try to not let him or something. But if, if Squishy's able to get a 50 here, it's a good play. Whether it neutralizes right here and they keep fighting for it, or whether it shoots up this way and Justin's in the net ready to either go or play defense, whatever needs to happen, that's a fine outcome. A 50 50 is a fine outcome. Whether the ball continues rolling in this direction, just or Squishy tries to take his time and control it out of the corner, that's a that's a good play too. Justin's behind them. Anything that happens is fine because Justin's in the net. Um, I don't, I don't know, Squishy doesn't even, he could literally not even go for the ball, just avoid Nolly, maybe Nolly wants to take the ball, maybe Jack keeps the ball and they're like on their back wall with the ball, but like there's two players back on, on defense, I don't see a single scenario here where Justin rotating back to the net is a bad play. I don't see any scenario. But then we see Squishy knows he can't go because he has no backup, so he can't go. And Justin becomes the one challenging instead of Squishy. And that opens up the, the this world where Nolly's able to bump Squishy. And now he's irrelevant and there's nobody on defense. But do you see how if squishy justin rotates away from the play here squishy knows he could have gone for that ball okay maybe he doesn't go for that ball because he's afraid of nally bumping him and then justin's retreating he's almost to back post at this point in time right in front of the net maybe he's now in a 2v1 where nally can bump him okay so maybe he takes his time here goes for this ball Nolly wouldn't have bumped him. Nolly's only able to bump him because he has to retreat to the back wall here. If Squishy was able to challenge at any point in time before this, Nolly wouldn't have had the bump on him. Squishy would have had been on this challenge. Justin would have been in the net. Yeah, Nolly could have gone for Justin instead of Squishy in this point in this position. But you can't argue that it'd be much easier for Justin to avoid this bump if Nolly's coming at him from this direction and Justin's in the net or at the back post. Very easy to dodge that. Much easier to dodge that than where Squishy was at on the back wall. Nolly just has to drive up to him. I mean, again, you cannot analyze every situation in the moment as a player, but sticking to these fundamental rotations, that's the point, is you don't have to. It's just always better. It just, it's, it's black magic, I've said it before, it's voodoo magic, that somehow sticking to fundamental rotations, sticking to one, two, three man rotations, rotating to the back post, rotating circular, rotating behind your teammates, it's just always better i don't see a play here 
where Justin rotating back behind Squishy would have been a problem. I just don't. That wouldn't have been a goal. It just wouldn't have. Plain and simple. It just wouldn't have been a goal. Oof. That I'm fine with. Because Squishy's way out of the play. You can't just rotate back here. Because Justin's not going to be able to get to this ball next. Squishy's not going to be able to get to this ball next. They're By the time you've turned and challenged here, they're both reset up behind you. So this this cut is fine. There are, there are cuts that are fine, but they're very obvious. They're very... It's very clear when it's fine for you to cut the rotation. This is one of those plays. Let's go back and see the opponent's rotation. Maybe that makes it clearer why this rotation is fine here. Just heard Jack flip off to the left. Yes, you know Garrett realizes that as a pro. He's got his game sound on. The days of playing without game sound on are done. Justin popularized that. That fell off very quickly. Everyone plays with their game sound nowadays. Not only that, but Appjack is moving in that direction. Here are the flip offs to your left. Garrett at this point in time knows nobody is directly behind him. And that's why this turn for the ball is acceptable because he has a very good chance of getting to this ball before anybody else on the other team. And that's just something that he just knows very easily, very quickly based on the information that was given to him. The sensory information, the, the visuals, the sound cues. Jack actually did a really good job to be there as fast as he was, honestly. Gets there a lot faster than I think you would anticipate. Like, look at that. He's turning out in this direction before the 50 even occurs. That's a very good read by Jack. So the only reason Garrett's contested here before, before he's able to get the next touch on the ball is because Jack played this out phenomenally. Maybe it was a slightly lucky read, or maybe he realizes, okay, Nolly's on this half, so I don't need to also be covering this, this half. So that's why he turns out this direction. But only that phenomenal decision-making from Jack is what even allows him to get this 50 on Garrett, any less than a perfect read on the play there. And Garrett comes out of this, this play with complete possession, beats the, the person challenging him. I think maybe six out of 10 times, Garrett beats whoever's challenging him, challenging him here in this position. Which again, that's not even a bad situation to lose a challenge to, or to just have to take a 50. So this very justified turn, very justified cut in the rotation by Garrett there. Ooh, really good try. And this is fine. I have no problem with Justin's rotation here because the ball gets, the play gets forced in his direction when he's already decided which way to rotate. This isn't a fault on Justin here. This isn't a rotation into the play. Sometimes the play gets forced in your direction and choosing to change a rotation just would take excessively long at that point in time. So that's different than blatantly rotating into the play as the play's already developed in that direction. This should be a goal. Let's open. Oh my gosh. Oh, not the best shot, unfortunately. Oh. All right, let me go back after that shot miss. Okay. Uh, Swishy misreading the ball. Unfortunate. Maybe he thought I was hitting the curve and bouncing down. That could be a definite possibility. I'm actually fine with that by Squishy. Fine with that. Let me see this. Am I fine with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that.
I think Squishy just getting harassed by Nolly back here. Yeah, definitely getting bumped a ton. I'm not going to go back and check that out from any other point of views. I think uh, it's not really necessary there. I think Justin and Squishy probably did fine back there, and it was just Nolly with the bump plays that made that a goal. Garrett again, not pathing over any pads. I really like that he's in mid, waiting for Squishy's touch. He has trust in Squishy to be able to get this to mid. He's not just he's not just preemptively moving in this direction, expecting Squishy to miss this. He's actually being a passing option, which is really good. It means they still have some trust in each other. That's good. And then, uh, obviously, respecting the fact that Jack is there. He's going to have that. He's not diving at this. Well done. Arguably could have grabbed that pad in front of him. It's fine, though. And then, you know, Garrett knows Justin's off in this direction. And he's leaving the ball for Justin. So you know that you're not going to be the next one on this ball. Why not take the slight extra 30-degree turn? And pick up a bunch of pads. You know, why are we flipping in this direction where we literally have zero pads in front of us? We know our teammate's going to be coming for this ball in this direction. So why are we not taking the extra 30 degree turn to the right to grab a couple pads off in this direction? Justin comes and challenges over here. And then we have this pad's probably up, honestly, or it will be up. Yep. And he could have three extra pads. One, two, three and have he had 11 boost before i went off of his perspective he could now have an extra 36 it'd be 47 boost in the midfield could be sat here waiting for the play instead of all the way back in the corner and had chronic missed that or the pass been off the backboard i mean I don't know how squishy ends up back on the back boost pad. I gotta, I gotta see all of this redevelop from like this perspective or something. Oh, uh, wait. So Garrett could be in midfield right now. Instead of going all the way back for boost, I'm assuming that mid boost isn't up. Very strong assumption. We pointed out the same issue with squishy in the first analysis was that he conceded the entire midfield too often, going all the way back for boost when he could stay upfield on pads. Again, a very basic concept that the pros used to teach people who watched them. At what point in time did it become irrelevant to maintain pressure in the midfield by picking up pads? I don't think it has. I think if we were watching this game from Gen G's perspective, from somebody like Appjack's perspective, from Nolly or Chronic's perspective, any of them, I think we can see a lot more pad pickup and a lot more maintenance of pressure in the midfield by picking up pads instead of rotating all the way back to the corner boost. I got to do more of these pro analysis, entire series analysis, because I don't think that basic rotations and that half rotation is staying up field on pads. I don't think that's dead. I don't think it. I don't think it's obsolete. I don't think it is. I think these players are just choosing to go all the way back to the boost for no good reason. And I think they're choosing to cut rotation or to rotate into the play for no good reason. I don't think that this is something that has become necessary pro play. I don't. I don't. If one of these two players had stayed up on pads or both of them, Garrett could be challenging this ball. Probably Garrett because he'd be actually moving in this direction. Squishy would be moving in this direction if he was picking up pads, right? Squishy rotated out this direction. He'd be moving in some way, shape, or form in this direction as he's picking up pads. So he wouldn't want to turn, waste his time turning with little momentum to come challenge us. He would let the person who's already, bam, also picking up pads. Actually, what was his rotation here? So he was coming this direction. Bam, he was waiting, and then the play comes out in this direction, he goes up for it. Because he beats Nolly to this ball, had he gone up for it. I mean, it could have developed a ton of different ways. Squishy stays up on pads, maybe. Maybe he races to the sidewall, decides he wants to make a play on this ball from the sidewall. Communication has to be a factor here. There is 
room for communication. I don't like over calming, over communicating in Rocket League. I think it creates a lot of hesitation, but certain plays can be communicated. Certain things are necessary to communicate this, that situation could, you know, whose ball that would be, could be communicated. It could be honestly, probably either Garrett or Squishy's ball. Bottom line is they're next on this ball, not Nolly. You don't just give up possession of the play. You don't just give up your offense. Had one or both of the players not rotated all the way back to their corner when they were on offense for a big boost if they had stayed up field on pads. It's the fundamentals. The thing that won, the thing that made NRG so good, in my opinion, from in my not opinion. I used to watch RLCS a lot. I watched NRG when they were at their peak a lot. And that's what they did. The fundamentals, the rotations, the pressure, the speed, everything fundamental was perfect for NRG. And that's what made them so good. I'm so heated because now that's exactly what's making them lose games. <sighs> And you can tell I love this team and I want to see them succeed because I am heated. Imagine if Garrett was up for this ball before Nolly even ever touched it. The play would be somewhere off in this side of the field. Squishy would be ready to follow up. Justin would be rotating in for this, this mid boost. And they would have complete sus sus sustainability, sub substance... They would have complete possession of this ball on offense still. And then we see another double commit from Squishy and Garrett here. And what's the cause of this? If we go back a little bit further, does just or Garrett see Squishy rotated all the way back? Yes, just sees now. And I'm sure they're also communicating that Squishy's all the way back. Garrett. Uh, flickers the ball came, maybe trying to see Squishy. Maybe didn't see Squishy back there. Maybe they're not communicating well. Maybe Garrett just accidentally fat fingered the, the ball cam button. I don't know what that flicker there means. He probably, even if he never turned off his ball cam, would not want to go up and challenge this because he's very far away from the ball. Understandable. This is a Garrett G mistake on this double commit, right? He turns off of the ball and then turns back on the ball. Decides not to go for it. Fine. Squishy's back. You know he's facing the play. So clearly Squishy's going to be next on this ball. Garrett shouldn't be turning for this. But that's, again, a lack of communication. A simple, a simple, a quick... You know what? It's not even the end of the world. Because it's fine. It's fine. He pulls off the ball. Squishy calls him off of it. Or he hears Squishy up for it. It's fine. Wasn't even a huge mistake that Garrett goes for that. It's actually fine. We're, we're, we're squeaky clean, we're fine. Did Justin just get demoed? Yeah, Justin just got deleted. So Garrett does have to be careful here. He is technically last for a moment. Apjack is in a very good spot to beat him if he dives. It's not bad. I don't hate that challenge from Garrett. It's fine. Wow, look at that. Justin just rotate away from the play. I mean, he kind of landed there. It was kind of, there was no way that he really messes that up. But at least, hey, I rotated away from the play once. Wow, look at that. You see what you see what having somebody behind you does for you? <laughs> you see that? You see what having a, somebody backing you up does? Garrett doesn't have to win this challenge. Yeah, he could. It'd be great if he gets, you know, better contact on this ball, probably. But he gets beat, and guess what? Justin's there next. Gets that axe touched. Arguably could have followed that up, but uh, hey, it's fine. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, is that why he didn't? Is that why he didn't follow it up? Yeah, Justin disconnected or something. Oh, oh. 
what? Yeah, that must have been a yeah admin timeout or something. I'm guessing Justin disconnected here, or maybe the whole server disconnected or something, and they had to restart at kickoff. Weird. Okay. Well, interesting. I don't know what happened there. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section below if you watched this live what exactly happened there. Good positioning. That's a beautiful textbook play there. Squishy forces the ball over him. Oops, didn't mean to switch perspectives. See what happens when you stick to textbook plays? Squishy forces the ball over him and gets the bump, which is important there. And Garrett sits on the backboard because if the ball goes over Squishy, that's the only other place it can go. Bam. That's perfectly done. Oh. Oh, good try, good try. This isn't this isn't really too much of anybody's fault there to be quite honest. Alright, so we got Garrett as third man, squishy first man, trying to make a play happen. Justin's in a spot where he's completely useless, recognizes that, lets Garrett come in as second man, rotates to third man. Garrett off of the wall, not the best touch. Would have uh, probably preferred to hit that straight off of the wall in some way that either Justin could come in for it or he could follow up with the touch himself. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. Just couldn't execute. Yeah, that's an extra touch there. Well done. Okay. Yes, good job. Oh, again, slight mis-execution. Jumps too early. Trying to land and go again. Slightly messes it up, unfortunately. And then, uh, there's also the double commit. I think he's trying to bump an alley there, to be honest. <laughs> Squishy diving everywhere. Not that it's a mistake, I'm just saying it's funny seeing Squishy dive left and right on that play. Good fundamental rotation, back post, beautiful. Look what that does for him, there's no danger in any play that occurs here. Apjack gets a pass Justin, it's fine because it's He's back. Even if Abjack gets a pass squishy here, it's fine because Garrett's back. It's not perfect, obviously, if somehow Abjack got this pass squishy, that'd be a huge squishy misplay. But we do notice that Justin rotates back into the play here, but I don't think it's a bad, it's a bad situation here. Because Justin is. Challenging this ball. Which is okay. It's all right. It's, it's, it's somewhat fine. Because he does see Squishy way off to the left. It looks like Squishy's back, grabbing that back left corner boost. Is that what he's doing? Or is that just kind of a little bit of a optical illusion? It does look like he's definitely grabbing that back left corner boost. He's very far away from the play. 
So I can understand Justin challenging this, half looping and challenging. Understandable. And that's just a bad habit. That's just a bad habit. Let's turn towards the back wall. Again, I think I think energy has a lot of bad habits that they need to break. Because uh, I don't know. It's not a huge deal. It's really not in this play. Because there's excuses you can make for Justin here. Maybe he thinks that he gets control of this ball off of this touch. Maybe he thinks he's catching this as it as it sort of comes across. It's landing on his ball and he's catching it out of his corner. You could argue he doesn't need to. Either he's driving this way and hits the ball, Jack slightly mistouches this and it sticks to the wall, in which case Justin's home free with the ball. That's one reason he should turn up this way. Another reason Jack tries to control the ball this way, Justin just drives straight into the plate, dispossesses Jack. Another reason he can drive this way instead of this way and then covering those options, if none of those happen, he rotates again out and to the back post away from the play so it is just a more so i think this is just a bad habit i don't think justin thought he was catching this even if he did think he was catching this you probably wouldn't want to be justin catching this ball going up your back corner here right if he thinks bam i'm catching this ball up my back wall up the back corner i mean it's fine it's not a bad play but that opens up the uh, possibility of jack chasing you behind you and bumping you off the ball and then you've got a floating ball in front of your net. I'm I'm reaching a little bit there. I'm reaching a little bit there, but again, I like every single time I point out how you can make a better case for rotating away from the play, rotating circular behind your teammates to the back post. Every time that you could argue either one Rotating away has been, in my opinion, the better play. And it's not, I keep saying in my opinion, because you just have to in this day and age. Everyone loves to argue. And if you say, in my opinion, it kind of gives you a blanket statement to say to like not be guilty of anything. And I'm just going to fucking rip off that bandaid and say, no, not in my opinion. It's freaking objectively better. Every single time that it's happened, it's been objectively better to rotate away from the play. Again, rotating away from the play, he covers two options. He covers that Jack hits this ball into him, in which case he comes out going upfield with the ball, or he just bumps Jack off of the ball. Bumps the ball out of Jack's possession. Objectively better. Just objectively better. Covers two options instead of one. Doesn't give you the option of getting bumped off of the ball right over your net on the backboard. It's objectively better. It's not my opinion, it is objectively better. Going back one more time, had he rotated out, he probably does bump Jack off of this. Squishy gets the ball with slightly more space. Maybe he doesn't even bump Jack. Let's say he doesn't bump Jack. He's now rotated behind Garrett. Garrett maybe pushed for this, maybe doesn't with Chronic sitting there. Maybe Garrett very quickly doesn't hesitate, jumps up for this pinch. Bam, it's way far on the other team's half. Garrett would have to have no hesitation there for that to work. Maybe he does hesitate. Maybe he wants Squishy to stay on this ball for one more challenge. That's fine. That's fine. Justin's behind him, rotating behind him. Garrett can contest sort of this front near post area, being ready to push up if he can, or ready to follow up on a 50-50 if he can. Justin's behind him, backing him up. Okay, Garrett. Depending on the comms, Justin could have drove up to the back wall from the back post and been there for this same exact play, for the same exact challenge, or Garrett drives up the, the wall, right? He was covering this front post option. Garrett drives up here. Maybe Garrett aerials for the challenge. Probably not the best play, but it could have also developed that way where Garrett feels like as he's at the front post sort of area, he sees this and instead of going up the back wall, maybe he just jumps up and aerials this. Very likely that it gets beat in that position if he does that. It's not a great play, but <laughs> it's still not that bad. All right, let's, let's continue.
Nolly's been harassing the hell out of everybody with these bumps. Ooh. I don't see a reason where Garrett has to make this super defensive turn here. Squishy clearly has next touch on the ball. Should be getting a 50-50 at worst. Why turn around? Why not? You, you have the time and the space to be relevant in the play by picking up pads going upfield rather than turning around, losing complete side of the play. Okay, he does turn. He does turn. If I would have gave him an extra second, he would have turned. Okay. That's good. Glad. Glad to see that. I thought he was going to be very hunkered down. Very, not hunkered down. Very out of the play, grabbing boosts in the back half. But he actually did make the decision to turn up. Good decision. I'm glad to see that. Should have played it out an extra second. Almost roasted again. Ooh. Let's go back. Check this out from other people's POV. Where does Justin come from? How does he come from this area? Okay, Squishy was on the ball. Challenges. It's fine. Okay, he's rotating back. This is fine. Grabs the boost. This is fine. This is all good. Good job, Justin, so far. Okay, probably just waiting. All right, that's a dangerous play, very difficult. Justin doesn't really do anything wrong in this play, so that means we need to check out Squishy's point of view. Let's go back one more time. Squishy on the solo play. Try, it's okay. I mean, valuable, valiant effort. Grabbing pads as he rotates back, well done. Yeah, it goes for that challenge. I was gonna say, he probably should be challenging that. All right, this comes through. Sees he's beat, so he doesn't go. That's fine. And then goes for the shot block. Rather than trying to just hit the ball, he tries to block the shot. That's just pure hesitation. Maybe he doesn't realize the situation Justin's in here. Thinks Justin's uh, supposed to be on this right now. Probably thinks Justin jumps towards the the post here and clears this back towards squishy ah uh, that's exactly what it is could justin have done that no because he has to be here to you know save a shot from jack honestly this is nobody's fault it's it's really not this is one of those mistakes it's not even really a mistake it's just a play by the offense sometimes there's nothing you could have done for the situation to go any differently <laughs> That's a really good shot from Jack, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I can't really say that Squishy should have rotated back post here. He doesn't have time. In this play, he doesn't have time to rotate back post. This is a luck of the draw sort of situation because if Jack shoots it in this, and if Jack shoots it on the left half of the goal, Justin has the play going in this direction and Squishy's perfectly rotated behind the play. It's the, the play is forced into Squishy, which makes it look like he should have rotated away from the play, but it wasn't a bad rotation by Squishy. The play was forced in his direction there's there's nothing really to point out as a mistake here it's more so what the other team did well and it's it's jack jack makes a great solo play all right that's just perfect perfect that shot is so difficult to get up in that top corner with his approach to it look at this i mean did you see how awkward of a takeoff how awkward of a landing everything is super awkward for jack here
I mean, but that's just, it's, it's just perfect. That was, there's nothing they could have done that. But they had a two goal lead at some point in time and ba basic rotations and picking up your pads, picking up their pads, maintaining midfield possession and pressure by staying in the play instead of rotating all the way back. These are, these are mistakes that you tell like a champ two. These are mistakes that you tell like a champ three, champ two level player. Why is energy making these mistakes? Maintaining pressure in the midfield, maintaining offense could have led to more scoring opportunities, could have led to more time bled off the clock when they had that two goal lead, not giving the other team enough time to make the comeback. Rotating away from the play, sticking to the basic fundamental 2019 rotations. How many times do we point out a situation where they could have avoided getting scored on by sticking to basic rotations? How many times do we point out how their plays out of defense would have been better by sticking to fundamental rotations? Well, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? We analyzed Garrett's point of view in this game. Honestly, he did a lot better in this game of the series than he did in the first game. Before we even started the first analysis, I pointed out that Garrett makes a lot of bad challenges. Really didn't make any bad challenges in this video. Did in the first video. In the first video, yes, had bad challenges. But this one, I also pointed out at the end of the first game that I thought Garrett just needs to really simplify his gameplay. Stop trying to do too much stick to basic rotations and that's exactly what he did here and he looked like he looked like maybe the best on the team it looked like whenever there was a mishap in this game it was squishy or justin for the most part garrett uh well i did point out the pads the pads a lot of the time were a problem for garrett but i think garrett looked possibly like the most solid player on this team in this game squishy unfortunately i think is the one who really dropped the ball this game the most Justin wasn't, you know, he also facilitated a lot of Squishy's mistakes. <sighs> I'm sorry, you don't want to point the finger at anybody. You don't want to, you know, say, I, say, I'm, say I'm the coach of NRG. I wouldn't want to be telling these players, hey, you're the problem. We're kicking you off the team. No, that's not the problem. Everybody's making fundamental mistakes. As a team, the rotations, as a team, because rotations are team-based. You know, if one person is rotating correctly and the other is not, it doesn't work out. Everybody has to be on the same page with rotations. And again, that's why these fundamental 2019 basic rotations are so good because they're easy to adhere to and very, they're very simple and they're very effective. Does anybody disagree with that? Does anybody see a play where I broke down one rotation versus the other does anybody agree with any or disagree with any of those statements that i made that the fundamental rotation was better every single time objectively better every time well guys that's it this video has been really long hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you subscribe leave a like on the video share this around make me the next coach on energy and uh, i'll see you guys in part three for the conclusion justin's point of view and uh until then bye have a great day night See, I'm a squishy fan, dude. That's literally his out his outro. Have a great day, night, whatever time you're watching this video. Peace. <laughs>